name is Minister Barton Aaron Porter, and today we're going to go into our Father's Word for another exciting Bible study. Now, I'm going to be using the good old King James Version of the Holy Bible, as I always do. So I encourage you to get your Bibles out and to study along with me. Let's approach our Heavenly Father's throne with a word of prayer before we get into this video. Father God, in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, we come with bowed heads and humble hearts, confessing our many sins, Lord, asking that you forgive us, wash us in the blood of Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, the Savior of the world. We put all our hope and trust in that precious blood he shed for us at Calvary, Lord. And we ask right now, Almighty God, that you fill us with your precious Holy Spirit as we go into your word, the Holy Bible. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, we thank you, Almighty God, for hearing our prayer. Amen. The title of today's Bible study is, Is Boasting a Sin? Before we get into it, I found a clip on President Donald J. Trump bragging about how good he is at everything. According to him, he's an expert on everything. He's the best at everything. So I want you to check this out before we go any further. I've done that too. Nobody knows the system better than me. Nobody knows politicians better than I do. Nobody knows. Nobody's better. Nobody's stronger. There's nobody bigger or better at the military than I am. I love the First Amendment. Nobody know, loves it better than me. Nobody loves the Bible more than I do. There is nobody that respects women more than I do. Nobody builds walls better than me. Nobody in the history of this country has ever known so much about infrastructure as Donald Trump. I Nobody knows debt better than me. I Nobody even understands it but me. Nobody can do it like me. Which is why I alone can fix it. I have Ivy League education, smart guy. I know words, I have the best words. I mean like, I'm a smart person. It's this, it's not my salesmanship. It's what? This, you know what that is? It's the brain power. I'm getting thousands of letters and tweets that I was right about the whole situation. I mean, I've been right about a lot of things, frankly. I should be a newscaster because I called it before the news. I watch this stuff. You know, I'm like a guy with vision. I have an instinct for this kind of thing. I'm good at war. I've had a lot of wars of my own. I'm really good at war. In my book, I predicted terrorism. It's a rigged system. I think I've done a great service by pointing this out. I was the one that really broke the glass ceiling on behalf of women. I think I'm doing the military a great favor. Did a great job in Texas, a great job in Florida. I truly believe that the first 100 days of my administration has been just about the most successful in our country's history. So you see our president boasting about how he's the best at everything. Nobody knows more about this than I do, and nobody knows more about this than I do. <laughs> Let's get into the scripture and see what the Bible says about people who exalt themselves. These people who constantly brag and boast about what they have or what they can do. Anyway, Proverbs 27, verse 1 and 2, the Bible says, Boast not thyself of tomorrow. Don't be boasting about what you're going to do tomorrow. For thou knoweth not what a day may bring. You don't know if you're even going to be here to see tomorrow. Anyway, verse 2, Let another man praise thee and not thine own mouth a stranger and not thine own lips. You see that? The Lord says, let somebody else exalt you or speak well of you. Don't do that for yourself. Don't be bragging about your accomplishments and things. God don't like that. In Proverbs chapter 16, verse 5, the Lord says, everyone that is proud in heart is an abomination to the Lord. The word abomination means something morally disgusting. You see that? This is a very serious sin in the eyes of God. He says, though hand joined in hand, he shall not be unpunished. And if it's a woman, she shall not be unpunished. God cannot stand people who are prideful, okay? Boasters, in other words. 
Proverbs chapter 6, verse 16 through 19, the Lord says, These six things does the Lord hate. You see this? Yea, which means yes. Seven are an abomination unto him. Seven things are something that's morally disgusting to him. Uh, 17, the first thing he says is a proud look. You see that? A lying tongue, and hands that shed innocent blood, 18, and heart, which means a mind, that deviseth wicked imaginations, feet that be swift in running to mischief, 19, a false witness that speaketh lies, and he that soweth discord among brethren. So God can't stand these seven things, but the first thing he says is a proud look. So pride is up at the top of the list here of things that God hates. So when you're bragging and boasting, you're committing a terrible sin in the eyes of God. It doesn't matter who you are, because whatever you have, it came from God. So therefore, we are never in a position to boast as though we obtain these things apart from God, or we have these things apart from God, okay? Now, I want to look at an example of a man who boasts and bragged about a speech he gave and God didn't like it and God killed him. Acts chapter 12, verse 21 says, And upon a set day, Herod, this is a ruler now, arrayed in royal apparel, he came out in his best clothes, set upon his throne and made an oration unto them. So he came out, sat down, and made, gave a speech. 22, And the people gave a shout, saying, It is the voice of a God! and not a man. Now, whether they really thought that or not, I don't know. Maybe he was very articulate or they was just trying to get in favor with him or they were afraid to speak against this ruler. Anyway, verse 23, and immediately, immediately, you see that? The angel of the Lord smote him. The word smote means the, the angel of the Lord killed him because he gave not God the glory and he was eaten of worms and gave up the ghost. So God killed this man for taking something that belongs to God. If he actually gave a beautiful speech, it's because God gifted him with the ability to do so. And so he wanted to stand there and let the people praise him. The Lord took him out. And he put this in here as, an, as a warning to all of us. And so there's a lot said about bragging and boasting and how God feels about it. And I'm going to share a couple more things and we're going to wrap this up. It's not going to be a long Bible study. Let's go to Luke chapter 14 and start at verse 7. This is Christ Jesus, our Lord and Savior, speaking. His, his true name in the Hebrew tongue, for those that don't know, is Yeshua HaMashiach. This is what the Lord taught or teaches. He says, and he put forth a parable to those which were bitten. Now, bitten means they were invited, okay? When he marked how they chose out the chief rooms, saying unto them, verse 8, when thou art bidden, or when you are invited of any man to a wedding, sit not down in the highest room, lest a more honorable man than thou or than you be bidden of him or be invited of him. Verse 9, and he that bade thee, or he that invited you, and him come and say to thee, come and say to you, give this man place. And thou or you begin with shame to take the lowest rule. You see this? He says in verse 10, but when thou art bitten or when you are invited, go and sit down in the lowest room. Then when he that bade thee or he that invited you cometh, he may say unto thee, he may say unto you, friend, go up higher. Then shall thou or you have worship in the presence of them that sit at meat with thee or sit at dinner with you. Verse 11, that was verse 10. For whosoever exalteth himself shall be abased. And he that humbleth himself shall be exalted. So Christ said, if you are invited to a wedding, don't assume that you get to sit right up there next to the groom. Uh-uh. The person invited who invited you might have that 
spot reserved for somewhere, someone else. So go sit down in the lowest place and let them exalt you. Let them tell you to go up if that's where they want you to sit. A lot of times at weddings today, there's seating arrangements. There's little cards on the table to let you know where you're sitting. But this was back in ancient time. So this is what the Lord teaches, humility. He says, whoever exalts himself shall be abased. Now, when we look up the word exaltive in the Strong's Concordance, it's the Greek word 5312. And in the Strong's Concordance, it means to elevate literally or figuratively. At the end, they got the word exalt and lift up. So anybody who pumps themselves up are going to end up being brought down. Just like the angel that rebelled against God, Lucifer. The Lord gave him wisdom and knowledge and beauty above all his creation, and it went to his head. He kept looking at his own little pretty face in the mirror, and then he thought that he should be God. And he talked a third of God's angels into a rebellion, which he can't win. He's already lost. So pride is a terrible sin. And bragging and boasting is an expression of pride. So he says, don't exalt yourself. And the word of base, when we look it up in the Strong's Concordance, it's the Greek word 50, 13. And it means to depress figuratively, to humiliate in condition or heart. And at the end, they got a base, bring low, humble, and self. So if you exalt yourself, eventually you're going down. That's right, because God don't like that. And then in Luke chapter 18, Christ taught this parable, starting at verse 9. He says, it says, and he, that is Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach, spake this parable unto certain which trusted in themselves that they were righteous. Now, this is very important. And despised others. Verse 10, two men went up into the temple to pray. The one, a Pharisee. A Pharisee was a religious leader during the time of Christ. A very well-respected so-called man of God. So-called. Anyway, and the other, a publican. A publican is a tax farmer or a tax gatherer. And they were despised among the people. Even like people don't like tax people to this day. Anyway, these two went into the temple to pray. Verse 11, and the Pharisee stood and pray thus with himself. The word thus means in this way. So he stood over away from the publican and he prayed to himself like this. God, I thank thee. I, God, I thank you that I am not as other men. <laughs> I thank you that I am not as other men are extortioners, unjust adulterers, and even as this Republican. I thank you, God, that I'm not like other men. I'm righteous, in other words. So he's blowing his own horn like we saw our president do at the beginning of this video. Verse 12. He says, I fast twice in the week. You're talking about his works now. I give tithe. Tithe is, was a tenth of the herd, the flock, and the crops. It never has anything to do with money, so let me point that out right now. So I gave, I give tithes of all that I possess. I give a tenth of the herd, the flock, and the crop, just like it said in the Old Testament. Never had anything to do with money. I have to say that because there's a lot of false teachers teaching that today. Anyway, then it says in verse 13, and the publican, that's the tax man now, standing afar off, would not lift up so much as his eyes unto heaven. You see this, saints? But smote upon his breast. He hit himself upon the chest, saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. So this man was very, very humble before God. And this is what you and I should be in the presence of Almighty God. Even when we think we're not doing so bad, we're still nothing but a bunch of sinners. And the only way we're going to be saved is because of Jesus died for us. And we put all our hope and faith and trust in that awesome sacrifice that he made on our behalf. So this man wouldn't even look up. He knew he wasn't worthy. Let's see what happens. Verse 14. Jesus said, I tell you, 
This man went down to his house justified. That word justified means rendered innocent. That means God declared him righteous even though he wasn't. Because he came to God the right way with humility and begging for mercy. This man went down to his house justified rather than the other. For everyone that exalteth himself, whoever elevates himself, shall be abased, shall be humiliated, in other words. And he that humbles himself shall be exalted. So may I hope and pray that this little Bible study helps you. God is against boasting and bragging. Oh, yes, he is. Unless we're boasting and bragging about him. Okay? Because he is worthy. And when I say him, I mean Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. So we're going to close this Bible study with these two verses of Scripture found in Jeremiah chapter 9. Jeremiah chapter 9, verse 23, 24. It reads, Thus saith the Lord it. That word thus means this. Okay? And the word saith. This says the Lord. This is what Jehovah said. All right? Jehovah God Almighty. He said, let not the wise man glory in his wisdom. Neither let the mighty man glory in his might. Let not the rich man glory in his riches. Now we need to define the word glory here so we can understand clearly what he's saying. When we look up this word glory as it is used here, it's the Hebrew word 1984. It's pronounced Halal, and it means to make a show, to boast. So what he's saying here is let not the wise man boast in his wisdom. Why? Because God the one who gave it to him. Let not the mighty man boast in his might. Why? Because God the one who gave it to him. Let not the rich man boast in his riches. Why? Because God is the one who gave him his riches. Verse 24. But let him that glorieth or boasteth glory in this. Let him that boasts boast in this. That he or she, if it's a woman, understandeth and knoweth me, Jehovah says, that I am the Lord which exercise loving kindness, judgment, and righteousness in the earth. For in these things I delight, saith the Lord says Jehovah. So there you have it. The scriptures clearly teach that boasting and bragging is a terrible sin in the eyes of Almighty God. If this particular Bible study has been a blessing to you and you want to bless me with a love gift of any amount, this is how you can do that. Go to paypal.com, download the PayPal app. It's free. Then you would use this code to send me your love gift. Paypal.me slash Barton Porter. You can also download the free cash app, which is the one I prefer. My code is cash.app slash dollar sign Barton1014. And then there are people who prefer Zelly. For Zelly, all you need is my name, Barton Porter, and my phone number, which is 630-441-4563. Now, here are non-financial ways you can be a blessing to yours truly in this ministry. I need your prayer, saints. Pray for Minister Porter and pray for this ministry. And share the Bible study videos. If you're being blessed or encouraged or taught through this ministry, share these Bible study videos with as many people as possible. And if you have any Bible questions or prayer requests, you can call me at 630-441-4563. I live in Illinois, so I'm in the central time zone. And if you don't have a phone, you can email me, bartonaaronporter at gmail.com. I need you to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Please hit the subscribe button.
It does not cost you a penny. And underneath the video also, after you hit the subscription button, there's a little bell icon. Click on that bell icon. That bell is the notification icon. Every time a video is released, you will get a notification. And underneath the video, there's two thumbs, one up, one down. If you like my video, if you like the content, please take the time to hit that thumbs up button. And please take the time to put something in the comment section. Now, these shirts that you see me wear all the time are my own designs. I have an online t-shirt store. It's godwear.store. So please check out the t-shirts, the hoodies, the women tees, the cups. If you see something you like, buy it because you're getting something that you can use to share the gospel of Jesus Christ everywhere you go. And you're also blessing this ministry as well. So until next time, this is Minister Barton Aaron Porter saying, may the good Lord continue to bless you and keep you all the days of your life. God bless you and goodbye.